Very few YouTubers who got their start during the early days of YouTube have been able to maintain longevity and relevance for more than a few years. People who instantly come to mind are Jax Films, Shane Dawson, and Ryan Higa, but they are the exception to the rule. Many of the early YouTubers have moved on from YouTube onto other endeavors. Ray William Johnson, for example, who once had the most subscribers, now focuses his energy on producing content for the internet's biggest wasteland, Facebook. Others tried to break into the mainstream, but ended up losing sight of their channel's original appeal. Either way, the point remains, many YouTubers lacked the resilience to hold on to relevancy, and their channels died. However, one figure who has managed to maintain a certain amount of relevance is Boogie2988. He started his channel back in 2006, and his content has gone through many phases since then, amassing him over 4.5 million subscribers. But recently, Boogie's been losing a lot of them, and many of his own fans are turning on him. Although his subscriber count has been stagnant for almost a year now, he's been losing more and more recently, and his sub loss has shown no signs of stopping. But why is this happening? Why did so many people decide to stop supporting Boogie? Today, I'm going to analyze the reasons people are frustrated with Boogie, and see how we got to this point. I've included a link in the description that shows all of my sources and evidence, if you want to see it for yourself. I've also heavily referenced a Reddit post called The Hidden Truth Boogie Doesn't Want You To Know, as it is very relevant to the public's shifting opinion of Boogie. First, it's important to understand what drew people to Boogie's channel in the first place. Boogie created a character called Francis, which basically played into all of the stereotypes of a fat neckbeard gamer who threw temper tantrums on camera. After Ray William Johnson gave him a shoutout, Boogie's channel got the boost that it needed. It was a very different era of YouTube, and Boogie's Francis character was a big hit, netting him a lot of attention. But although people came for the outrageous antics of Francis, they stayed for Boogie. Boogie was always very open about his life, including his childhood abuse and his health issues, both physical and mental. Eventually, Boogie built a reputation for himself as a sweet and genuine guy. Some people even went as far as to call him the Mr. Rogers of the internet. People call me the Mr. Rogers of YouTube every once in a while. And they saw him as just a nice and wholesome man who was dealt a really bad hand in life. He operates a variety channel and uploads anything from personal videos to gaming news to Francis videos. But recently, starting in 2016, Boogie started to become more outspoken about things, whether it was political or drama related, and ended up annoying a lot of people in the process due to his propensity for fence sitting. However, although Boogie's fence sitting might be what he's most commonly criticized for, I believe there are many other factors at play that explain his dwindling reputation. So instead, I want to draw your attention to this simple question. Who really is Boogie2988? A big part of Boogie's initial draw was his personality. People felt that he was a sweet and inspirational man who went through a lot, and they wanted to show their support. Because Boogie's personality and personal life are so intertwined with the content he makes, whether or not you will like his content is going to be entirely dependent on your view of Boogie as a person. Although you might be able to separate other YouTubers' content from the people who made them, it's nearly impossible in the case of Boogie. Authenticity is one of the most valued qualities a YouTuber could have. People like to watch YouTubers that are honest and trustworthy. They don't want to watch someone who's just putting up a front for views. Many people only broadcast the best parts of themselves on social media, and it's certainly not uncommon for people to act differently from their online persona. After all, it's just that, a persona. However, a growing faction of people have started to turn against Boogie. While some have simply just lost interest in the content he makes, others believe that Boogie's persona is completely fake and is merely a cover-up for his manipulative behavior. And while those are two very different reasons, I actually think they're more connected than they seem, since they both relate to the overarching theme of Boogie's inconsistent persona. Lately, it's become impossible to ignore the shocking disparity between who he is on YouTube and who he actually is on Twitch. Boogie sums up the difference in a Reddit comment. I like to think YouTube is the person that I try to be, whereas Twitch is much closer to who I really am. Do you guys want to see what I can do? Why do I have two beds? One for me and one for my hooker. One for me and one for my hooker. One for me and one for my hooker. One for me and one for the hooker. One for me and one for my hooker. Welcome one to the sub club. Yeah, I can see why not everyone's a fan of Twitch, Boogie. This is what weird looks like. This is what weird looks like. This is oh go. Oh. This is what weird looks like. But like I said, a big part of Boogie's public persona is that he's just a nice guy, a perception of himself that he likes to play into. He even went as far as to say that he would never call somebody names, not even his worst enemy. I had a guy try to rob me once. He tried to break into my apartment. And you know what I did? I drove him home. He was drunk, he was trying to break into my apartment, he said he wanted to use the phone. 
I let him use the phone. He called his wife. He explained to his wife that he was drunk and that she needed a ride. This is the kind of person I am. I would never, I would never call somebody names. I would never attack somebody. I, I, these are the things I won't do for my worst enemy. However, certain clips of Boogie have been circulating for months on Reddit that seem to challenge his nice guy persona, such as the time Boogie laughed about how his ex died of cancer. And, uh, oh. yep, so fuck her. And now she's dead. And Actually, both of them are The girl is dead, my mom is dead, everyone I know and love Wait, is dead. Wait, the girl died? Whoa. How yeah, she, died at, she died of 39 of, like, fucking lung cancer. She had breast cancer, and they beat the breast cancer. But Jesus. then the treatment for the breast cancer gave her lung cancer. Oh, oh my God. God. That sounds absolutely terrible. Yeah, it was yeah. fucking awful. Yeah. I feel... I'm sorry you had to go through that, bro. That. Yeah, yeah, that's okay. All right. I mean, I didn't go through it. I'm still alive. She's dead. Damn. Oh. <laughs> brutal. Yeah. I'm serious. You know, she like what do I what, why do I get to complain? She's the one that has to be dead, you know, fuck. <laughs> so how does Boogie try to justify this? Well, I found this Reddit comment in which he tries to explain why he did it. The clip of me talking about my ex-girlfriend, here's the context. That girl died of double cancer. It's horribly sad. But when we were kids, dating in high school, she used to tell people all the time, I hope you get cancer. Her sense of humor was dark. I loved it. She would tell me to get cancer all the time. One day, she said to a mutual friend, I hope you get double cancer. We laughed and we laughed. The last conversation I had with her, about a week before she passed, she laughed and said, Can you believe I'm actually gonna die of double cancer? It broke the ice. We laughed and laughed. It was the last laugh we ever shared. When I think about it now, I laugh. Just the way she wanted me to do. I get that you may not understand that kind of dark humor or her wishes, but I hope you respect them. I'll tell that story every chance I get, and I'll laugh when I do. Because she was the kind of person who never wanted to see me cry. So Boogie claims that this was all an inside joke, something that obviously cannot be proved or disproved since the person in question is dead. And he also said this on Twitter, Danielle was my best friend for 30 plus years. She was also my first girlfriend. Losing her broke me. I didn't properly convey that in this moment. She knew my sense of humor though, and shared it with me. We actually made jokes about her cancer on her deathbed to cope. So fuck her. And now she's dead. <laughs> hmm, that doesn't really sound like something you'd say about someone who really mattered to you. But even if you do take his word for it, why would he tell this inside joke publicly to people who wouldn't get it? There's a reason it's an inside joke, Boogie. Another clip that's been making the rounds is this one, of Boogie mocking one of his teammates for coming from a broken home. Okay, uh, right, are your parents still- here. are your parents still alive? By chance to- Here we go, ready? Yeah, they are. And are your parents still together? No. Okay, alright, so I- maybe I should take point then. What? Uh, well, if your parents aren't together, then you probably come from a broken home. You're probably going to get real angry when you start losing, so... You know. I won last game, but... That was my first game on. Alright, well, maybe you just learned how to channel that anger. Alright, I wish you luck, man, then. Good luck. My parents died. That sucks. Yeah, I'm pretty much Batman, so... This clip garnered over 10,000 upvotes on the livestream fail subreddit, with many people calling Boogie out. While some people thought it was nothing more than a poorly executed edgy joke, others pointed out how disrespectful Boogie was being, considering that this was just a random person, and not one of his friends who would know that he was just joking. Commenters also criticized his public nice guy persona for being disingenuous, and cited this clip as an example. Boogie's official response to the controversy was that it was a stream meme. This is a stream meme. It's a joke. We had a dude talk about his parents getting divorced in the stream a few months back, so we carried it over. It is not meant seriously. Again, all YouTubers play it up for the camera and try to show the best versions of themselves. But with Boogie, it's become harder and harder to ignore the glaring disparity between his persona on stream and off stream. Someone says you can't put your finger into a clitoris. Somebody here doesn't have a scalpel handy. You splay that fucker just right, you can wrap it all around your fingers. You just gotta, you gotta shave real thin. <laughs> Woo! That's disturbing. That's the most fucked up thing I've said in a while. You just gotta lick them right where they pee from. Like this. For I'm YouTube. a black person. Sprague, I'm glad to hear you're still black. And thanks for two months of support, man. That's a lot of money, I guess, for a person of color, or is it not? I don't know. But I have a gun that's also a USB drive. So, I don't know if that offends you, Twitch, but... 
So please give daddy your money or else I'll never be able to suck Mickey Mouse off. I want to suck Mickey Mouse's big dick. While you could say this is just crude and edgy humor, it can come off as pretty jarring compared to how he acts in his YouTube videos. Some people have even described it as him having a different personality depending on which platform he's on. Here's what Boogie has to say about this. Oh, Boogie makes edgy jokes. Yeah, I make edgy jokes, man. I don't mean the jokes. If I say something about, you know, eating, eating a, a cat, I don't actually eat cats, man. That's the joke. The joke is that I don't eat cats. That's the funny, you know, whatever. I can honestly understand where he's coming from, but it's easy to see why people would be weirded out when he changes his persona that easily between platforms. Who on social media just portrays themselves? Who on social media shows all of the nasty, gnarly, miserable parts of their lives? Nobody. Who does that? I think I share more than most. The point he's trying to make in that video is that all YouTubers come off differently in their videos than they do in real life. And I guess he does have a point there, but it just seems to be on another level with him. On YouTube, he's always super reasonable and well-spoken and tries to understand both people's side to a story and tries to sympathize with people. Then on the other hand, he goes on 4chan and calls people beta cucks. Now that we've talked about his Twitch presence, let's talk about his Twitter, which is full of hot takes which have annoyed many people. As I've mentioned, Boogie has been criticized for his constant fence-sitting and attempts to portray himself as a centrist. One example of a statement he made that incited controversy was when he suggested that we should wait before allowing gay marriage in order to avoid backlash. Like, I have always believed, hey, we should have same-sex marriage, I love same-sex marriage, let's do it. But the problem is, we try to get it done right now, there's gonna be a huge backlash, okay? So let's, let's try to do it in 20 years, in 10 years, and let's see if we can avoid the backlash, right? Let's just like slowly, methodically change minds. I don't like it when somebody gets murdered for being gay, so let's not rile up the fucking crazies, okay? Mm -hmm. Let's just go slow and easy. He also suggested that some good came out of the Holocaust because Nazi doctors made advances in medical science. And he cited that as one of the reasons he believes nothing is black and white. Uh, if you think about it, a lot of, a lot of, some good came from all of that in that health science was was advanced many many years and that's one of the things that kind of made me have the mentality that i have nothing is black and white the holocaust is horrible absolutely horrible but some good came out of it <laughs> you gotta look for that boogie would later call the statement one of his biggest regrets and said it was his history teacher who taught him this and that he no longer believes it however the damage was already done and many people were appalled at its core, it's this fence sitting that has frustrated so many of his fans. And people feel like they can no longer trust him to really be himself when he's trying too hard to please others. This is especially an issue since his whole content is personality based. However, enough people have discussed his hot takes. So what's his political position? Well, he says he's not a centrist, but just a few months prior, he says that he's a centrist. I did some digging and I found this tweet saying that he's not a centrist, he just plays one on the internet. And when Philip DeFranco replied, that is kind of an odd statement to me, can you explain what just playing a centrist means? Boogie said, I normally lean very left in most things. I don't really lean right very often, only fiscally. But online, I tend to favor a more neutral approach, setting aside my personal feelings to focus more on things people online need to hear. Civility, decency, etc. Depending on how you read this, you could either interpret this as Boogie saying he's just more conscious about keeping his personal views out of his public persona, or that he's outright admitting to being disingenuous about what he really believes. I also found this tweet that seems to confirm the idea that Boogie is just a character. Steven, the realist me, has always been a moderate live and let live liberal. Boogie, the person I try to be, is a critical thinking centrist. Francis, the person I try to not be, is just an asshole. In addition to putting up hot takes on Twitter that annoy and often anger people, Boogie also has a habit of inserting himself into situations and making it about him. On June 25, 2019, the news came out that Etika had committed suicide. At only age 29, he was still a rising star with huge potential. It was a day of mourning for many. Boogie sent out many tweets that day, one of them being this. Reddit and other negative feedback loops combined with my mental illness has made me suicidal as well. But I have been bullied my whole life, and it has in fact made me strong enough to endure it. Not sure I could be in Etika's shoes and survive it though, he has it rough. Many people were upset because they felt that Boogie took a tragic situation that devastated so many people and tried to make it about himself. And to add insult to injury, he felt the need to brag about how strong he was too, making things even worse. In the tweet above, Boogie attempts to clarify. 
Etika has made it clear that the negative feedback he gets on the internet has made his life more difficult. I was just trying to convey that. I was empathizing with that by saying I relate to something similar, but he has it 10 times worse than me. However, that did not stop the backlash. But that's not the first time either. Before the news came out about Etika's suicide, Boogie also said this in a stream. Like, for all we know, it, yeah, it, he really is mentally ill. It's two things, right? mental health and the internet. Right, exactly. Like, and those two don't things know. don't mix, dude. I can tell you firsthand. Right. If I was not a fucking titan of strength, I could not have mixed those two, right? Right, right. This is one of the problems with Boogie. He can't simply comment on a situation. He also feels the need to insert himself into it. But this is neither the time nor the place. And people made it clear that this was unacceptable. So as damage control, he decided to post a donation he made to a mental health charity, even going as far as showing the exact amount, an action which also drew criticism. And then there's the time Nintendo gave a terminal cancer patient the chance to play Smash Bros Ultimate early. And Boogie found a way to insert himself into that, too. Glad that I was able to help draw attention to this, and so glad it actually happened. Way to go, Internet. We did something awesome. Okay, that seems fairly benign. So, what's the issue? Well, here's the thing. Boogie didn't actually do anything, aside from two retweets about the cause. He didn't make any tweets of his own about it either. The man who was a victim of terminal cancer died soon after, and Boogie had nothing to say about that. In a Reddit post by someone who said he was a friend of this person, he wrote, My late friend got to play the new Smash shortly before he died as a result of a pretty big media campaign, which was promoted by professional Smash players. Boogie, of course, inserted himself into it. And in a comment, he clarified, I'd also like to reiterate that him not saying anything after my friend died is not my issue here. My issue is that he inserted himself into this as if he made any kind of impact on my friend getting to play Smash. He acted like he had a personal involvement by saying, look what I did. If Boogie was not known for saying things to get attention, this would not bother me in the slightest. Or what about the time that Total Biscuit died of cancer, and in Boogie's community post that was meant to remember him, he mentions how Total Biscuit threw him under the bus in the name of consumer rights. John once also threw me under the bus in the name of consumer rights. A PR company was promoting what almost came down to paid reviews, and John broke the story. I was working with that PR company at the time, and while my contract was different than the other contracts, I got lumped in. I talked to John about it, and he said I shouldn't be working with shady companies if I didn't want to be connected to shady things. He was more than glad to sacrifice anything in the name of consumer advocacy, including me. Some people understandably found it to be distasteful that Boogie would talk about how John supposedly threw him under the bus. So when people rightfully called him out, Boogie responded with this. Hate to mention this again, but read the comments on my memorial to Total Biscuit. A lot of people took the threw me under the bus section as me complaining about John. Couldn't be further from the truth. It was meant as a testament to a strong character and devotion to you. Not to mention, John saved my career by getting me away from doing paid game sponsorships. In the end, it would have cost me my integrity to continue to both critique and get paid to promote games. Because of him, my brand deals are related to non-gaming products. The way I phrased it was purposeful. He knowingly harmed my reputation by calling me out on some bullshit I was doing and did it for the purposes of both helping me and the gaming community as a whole. But he wasn't afraid to call bullshit. That's the point. Although many of the top comments on this post are defending Boogie, there's no denying Denying that the phrase throw under the bus has a very clear negative connotation to it. And to phrase it that way in a post that's supposed to memorialize him is just plain inappropriate. Boogie's weight loss has also been the subject of scrutiny, with many people claiming that he has been dishonest about it. Here's what the mega thread on Reddit has to say about this. Being morbidly obese is an ill-advised lifestyle choice, but it is ultimately one an adult like Boogie is free to make. The issue here is that he constantly emotionally baits his viewers who genuinely worry about his health and well-being, giving them all false hope that he will be better. This is just a cheap manipulative tactic to get views and money because he is never changing. He also consistently lies to his audience about making an effort to change. They then take this as inspirational because they've fallen for his lies. Manipulative behavior such as this is what is being criticized, and not necessarily his poor life choices. The mega thread then provides links that document Boogie's weight loss failures, and how he chooses to rationalize and discuss them. You can see that Boogie has uploaded a video talking about his 30 days of clean eating. However, as these images show, he failed at that. He admitted to it in a Reddit comment, and also made a video talking about the failure. Boogie's excuse was that there was no healthy food at an event that he was attending for Mortal Kombat 11. There is no healthy food. All they have is burritos, and tacos, and french fries, and cheeseburgers, and pork buns, 
and there's no healthy food at the entire event. However, as you can see from this other YouTuber's vlog of the event, you can clearly see this food truck outside the event, which even has the word healthy plastered on it. Here's how he responded when someone asked him on Twitch why he didn't commit to his 30 days of clean eating. I wasn't able to continue my clean eating, man. I'm really sorry about that. I guess it was very important to you, and I'm sorry that it was, but yeah, since I was traveling, I uh, wasn't able to keep it up, man. I got back home, and I've been doing it ever since I got back home, but you're right. I, was, I didn't do it while I was traveling. That's a real shame, man. And I'm really sorry I wasn't able to. Love you, though. Now, I'm not sure exactly how the question was asked, but the point remains that nobody can actually hold Boogie accountable for this stuff. Because when you do, he either makes excuses, gets really defensive, or becomes passive-aggressive. In addition to being passive-aggressive, Boogie then takes it a step further. Let's see how many people are disappointed. Tell me in chat, are you, are you okay with or disappointed with the fact that out of my 30-day cleaning clean eating habit, I only managed to pull about 28. How, how, are you okay with that, or are you pissed? Let me know in chat, because uh, clearly Annabelle's pissed. And I don't blame her, she should be. Yeah, just get the entire chat to gang up on this one person. That's a very classy move. Also, he didn't even do 28 days at that point. He started January 1st with the intention of going a full 30 days. 16 days in, he cheated on the diet for two straight days while in LA. He comes back on January 11 with the intention of detoxing or clean eating for the rest of the 30 days. When he said this on stream on January 25, he was 25 days into the diet, with two of them being cheat days. He then assumes, and I guess assumes that we assume, that he's going to not cheat on the diet for the remaining 5 days, so he can just count them right now as a success. Apparently, Boogie is a psychic now, and can guarantee that he won't give in to his cravings for the next 5 days. You can also see this image, comparing how much it seems Boogie ate in his video versus someone else's video. Boogie has also said this about why he can't lose weight. People are always saying to me that they have the cure to what ails me. Eat only meat, eat no meat, eat only fruit, eat 2000 calories a day, eat 10 times a day, eat only one meal a day, don't eat at all, fast, do shake replacements, juice, etc, etc. Fortunately, I can say unequivocally that none of these are the solutions to my problems. I have tried them all, some for as short as two weeks, some for as long as six months. None of them have been able to get me under 500 pounds. In a comment, he said that he found two things that would work. The first is near starvation. I can lose about one or two pounds a week on a 1200 calorie a day diet. This mostly requires me to replace meals with small shakes and then eat about 10 of them a day. This is not food. This is awful. This is disgusting. I can only imagine how terrible it would be for normal people, but for someone who relies on food as their only crutch to deal with their shit, it's near impossible. I did manage to do this through the entire month of January though, and in that month lost almost 20 pounds and have kept it off. I just need to keep powering through it. It's just so very fucking difficult for me to do. Boogie then wrote that the second thing that would work is bariatric surgery, which he ended up going with. In a comment further below, Boogie claims that he has a ruined metabolism, as well as a hormonal imbalance. Boogie has also said this in a Tumblr post. In the past three years, I've struggled to lose weight. We've tried every diet there is, eating less, aka calorie restricting, avoiding sugar, avoiding meat, avoiding carbs, low fat, high fat, no fat, high sugar, low sugar, no sugar, high meat, low meat, no meat. Nothing worked. Even when I had a deficit of 2000 plus calories a day for weeks on end, my body wouldn't budge. Many people on Reddit proceeded to call out Boogie for making excuses for his failure to lose enough weight. But okay, clearly this is something Boogie struggles with, and he also has mental health issues which he has been very public about. But what happens when someone genuinely tries to help him? Well, let's get into that. So a few months ago, Alan from the channel Every Damn Day Fitness uploaded a video called To the Family, Friends, and Fans of Boogie2988 in which he appeals to the people supporting Boogie to encourage him to seek help. I'll summarize the video. Alan mentions that his initial impression of Boogie getting gastric bypass surgery was that he was doing it as a quick fix, so he can lose the weight without actually having to change his behavior. At one point in time he got the surgery and he made a quote that I, that I put in a video and stated that he felt that he could eat whatever he wanted and still lose weight. And I personally said, I said that that is a serious warning sign that it is, he was, has not addressed his food addictions, he pretty much just admits to all that. I didn't do the mental work pre-surgery that I needed to do. In fact, I'm more damaged now in a post-surgery world than I was in a pre-surgery world because I got fucking divorced. Where he has not addressed his eating issues. Um, so I went back to comfort eating almost right away, but 
my surgery did its job. I was able to comfort eat and I was able to eat bad foods that I shouldn't eat, but I couldn't eat very much of them. So I still lost 200 pounds and I'm very happy having lost that 200 pounds. Boogie has also stated multiple times that he's really happy at 350 pounds and that he hasn't weighed in a while. And at one point in time, he admits, or he claims that he's great, great, I get to eat what I want for the next 10 years and I get to great, have a great 10 years because he says he's never been happier. And so if somebody says to me, well, Boogie, you're going to die in 10 years if you don't lose this last 50, 100 pounds. I'm like, hey, that sounds great because I'll have a great 10 years, I'll eat what I want and I'll die and I'm looking forward to dying. At the same time while saying he's got more trauma now than he had beforehand because he's gotten a divorce, it's very, very contradictory. Uh, it, it screams of needing uh, much, much more counseling. So Alan says that someone needs to get a hold of him and talk to him about getting some inpatient therapy. My plea to the, to the family and friends, by the way, because we are going to talk about a few of these clips, my plea to the family and friends of Boogie2988, somebody get a hold of him and talk to him about getting some inpatient therapy. In the video, Alan makes it very clear that he isn't trying to be mean or malicious, and that he's genuinely concerned about Boogie. In fact, the entire tone of his video is respectful. To his fans, I, this is not to be mean at all. This is not me being trying to be mean. I understand that he's got a lot of trauma. I'm not trying to diminish that. I'm not trying to belittle that. I'm not trying to do anything like that. I am trying to state that every one of his fans should be highly concerned at this video. Most days when I think about eventually dying, it's relaxing to me because I've been anxious my whole life. Ever since I was a kid, I have trouble sleeping at night. I have trouble even just sitting down and doing nothing. My brain just never stops. I'm in so much emotional, mental pain. I, I, I look forward to dying. <laughs> you need help. You need inpatient therapy, in my opinion, of course. You need to be admitted because what you think is going to be a great 10 years could probably be two okay ones and just a few more really miserable ones before you die. And that would be a damn shame. So how does Boogie respond to this? Well, he plays the victim. Videos like this are not helpful. They are harmful. They make the situation so much worse. If this man wanted to help me, instead of getting clicks, he would have emailed me. We would have discussed it. I have no emails, no contact attempts, nothing. He clearly just wants to make the clicks, the money, and use me as an example for his audience. Maybe on some level, he also wants to help. Ooh, I see you're using the Prince EA method of deflecting criticism. If you wanted to give me constructive criticism, why not send me an email, shoot me a message? Except here's the thing, Boogie. He did reach out to you, and he offered to help you. To add on to that, me reaching out to you, me emailing you, this video wasn't for you. But you and I have discussed things in comment sections of one of the videos I did make about you, and I offered you to reach out to me anytime. Uh, and I did actually reach out to you on Instagram on June 3rd, 2018, after Steve Shaw made a video about you, stating that he wanted to help you, let us help you, uh, because you had gained weight or stalled in your weight loss at a portion of time when you were telling your audience you were doing everything you're supposed to do when in reality for a person of your size if you were doing everything you're supposed to do you should have been dropping weight like crazy when alan pointed this out boogie responded i don't check instagram frequently i barely use it and i never use it for messaging i followed you here right after seeing your video in the hope that you would follow me back and i could dm you never did Alan responded by saying, I have gotten you 30 messages and video chat requests from when I was sleeping and have responded. But even if he didn't reach out to you, this is a ridiculous way to counter criticism. Public figures are open to criticism on a public platform. The idea that criticism should come in the form of a private message which you'll never read, and you didn't, is just asinine. Boogie also says in the post that he truly is happy at 350 pounds. In that one night on stream after a particularly miserable day, he talked about how he's feeling. Except that it's not just that one night he talked about wanting to die. It's a consistent pattern with him, and I'll get into the other times he says things like this later on. It's honestly concerning, and it should be something that concerns all of his fans. However, when someone like Alan draws attention to these cries for help, Boogie demonizes him. In addition to expressing his distaste for Alan's video, Boogie also wrote, The idea that my friends, community, and everyone else should turn against me is insane. It literally is the only thing keeping me alive, that I have my fans and my job and my friends and my dog. Without these, I don't know that I'd be trying at all. Except, nothing in Alan's video even remotely calls for people to turn on Boogie. He literally just said that people should encourage Boogie to get inpatient therapy. 
Not once does he ever suggest that people should turn against him. Towards the end of the post, Boogie says that he is in therapy, and he's working with a specialist and a trainer helping him. So that should be the end of the situation, right? No, it doesn't even end there. Boogie went on the H3 podcast and completely misrepresented the video. Like, there's this YouTuber, I won't mention any names, but he made a video about, like, um, I said on Twitch one night, I'm like, I don't know that I'll ever get smaller than 350 pounds because I'm really happy at my current size. Mm. And the reason I said that was not because I'd given up. I said that because a lot of people were really worried about me and I wanted them to stop worrying. I wanted them to know that I was happy where I currently am. What he conveniently leaves out, however, is all of the other stuff he said about how he looks forward to dying and only expects to live for 10 more years. And so if somebody says to me, well, Boogie, you're going to die in 10 years if you don't lose this last 50, 100 pounds, I'm like, hey, that sounds great because I'll have a great 10 years, I'll eat what I want, and I'll die, and I'm looking forward to dying. That's the stuff you say to get people not concerned? That's the stuff you say to make people think that you are happy? That's the stuff you say? He also blatantly misrepresents the video here. They turned it into, oh, he's encouraging people to stay fat and he's going to die in the next year and all the stuff, right? I challenge each and every one of you to look above, below, and at the end at the video that I made about Boogie 298. I challenge each and every one of you, I really do, to find where I said anything like that. I understand that Boogie went through a lot and that he will need professional help to overcome everything he's been through. And that's exactly why Alan was appealing to the friends, family, and fans of Boogie to encourage him to get help, even though Boogie didn't like that. In 2018, Boogie tweeted, I am an example that if you keep trying, you can turn it around when the cards are stacked perfectly against you. But when you look at his current trajectory, you start to see that his weight has plateaued. Boogie recently addressed the stagnancy in his weight loss during a stream. You guys can clip this for YouTube if you want to, too. Let's clip this. Go ahead and clip this for YouTube. Let me get to a safe place because I'm going to flip over and do the big screen for this, okay? All right. So a lot of people are wondering why I'm stuck at 340 pounds. And there's three major reasons, okay? There's three things that have to say that. Number one. Fuck you, it's none of your fucking business. It's my body, it's my choice, eat shit, right? It's only your business when I make it your business and I'll let you know when it's your business. When I want to talk about it, I'll talk about it. When I don't want to talk about it, I'm not going to, so kiss my ass. What Boogie fails to grasp is that he already made it everyone's business when he decided to publicly document his weight loss journey. He's a public figure who continues to talk about his personal life and health, so it's only natural that people will be curious. Good news is I want to talk about it, okay? Number two, my primary focus is not on my body right now. My primary focus is on my brain. Now, part of that is my body. I am walking more and more every day. I could show you the blisters on my feet for how much I've been walking if you want to see them. I got fucking wounds on the bottom of my feet because I'm walking as much as I can. I'm walking on my treadmill. I'm walking my dog. I'm going to theme parks. I'm trying to up my mobility. I'm doing my exercise. I'm doing everything I can do. What I'm not doing is I'm not cutting back on what I eat because food makes me happy and I want to be happy right now. So I'm eating some of the foods that I shouldn't be eating because I like being happy because I'm struggling um, with my mental health right now and food helps me with that. But I am also like killing it when it comes to the physical department. So essentially what Boogie is saying is that because he has better mobility and food makes him happy, he doesn't want to eat less. Keep in mind using food as a coping mechanism is how he got to the point he needed surgery in the first place. But this is probably where I'm going to bottom out for a while. I'm probably going to be about 340 pounds for quite some time. Because what my primary focus now is here and on my mobility. And if people don't understand that, fuck them. I don't care anymore. I honestly don't care. Oh, Boogie, you're lazy. Fuck you. Oh, Boogie, you're not trying. Fuck you. Oh, Boogie, you're... Fuck you. Go fuck yourself. I don't care. I don't care what you think anymore. I don't want to make myself miserable to lose a few more pounds that I don't really care about when this is what I really need to be working on. Are you guys, you guys agree with me there? Or do you disagree? It's entirely up to you guys. You don't have to agree with me, but I'm curious to see uh, those of you who get it and those of you who don't. Yeah, you don't have to agree, but I want to see who gets it and who doesn't. Oh, you don't? That's fine too. Love you though. But regardless of all the controversy he finds himself in, Boogie still has his fans. In fact, many of his fans see him as an inspiration, and he openly plays to this perception of him. So, with the amount of influence he has, Boogie has a responsibility to his audience to, at the very least, not say harmful things. Unfortunately, Boogie didn't live up to this responsibility when he told a suicidal fan that he would understand if the fan ended up committing suicide. You make me so sad, Boogie. I want to end it all and saw you as an inspiration. My end is on you. I hope you choose to stay and fight just like I am. If you don't, I'll be disappointed, but I will understand.
but we only get one life. You have to live it to its fullest, even if it is utterly pointless in the end. This is an incredibly careless thing to say to a suicidal fan who's looking to you for guidance. And look, I get it. When someone is in that dark state of mind, they want somebody who can relate. But saying that you'll understand if the person does go through with killing himself is just awful. However, it's also important to consider that Boogie is not in the best state of mind to give advice. That certainly does not excuse the carelessness of such a statement, but given his current mental state and the fact that he's talked about being suicidal as well, it is possible that he doesn't realize how dangerous his words are because the idea of suicide is so normalized in his life. Boogie has said many times that he'll probably kill himself. Are you and Robin Williams related? No. Both of you shared the last name? No. That was the, I, I have nothing in common with Robin Williams at all whatsoever. He's hilarious. I'm a piece of human garbage. So pretty much, pretty much pretty different. I think the only thing we have in trouble, the only thing we have in common is that eventually I'll probably kill myself and also mental illness. Many times when he says things like this, it flies under the radar and nobody really talks about it. However, these statements have caught the attention of his critics, who believe that Boogie is simply a manipulator who threatens suicide to get what he wants. More and more, people are starting to believe that Boogie only says these things to elicit pity and emotionally manipulate his viewers into supporting him. Let's take a look at some clips and explore this theory to see if they have a strong case. I think, I think, and this is my opinion, I think when the time comes, I'm gonna have no problem pulling the trigger or like, once, once I've fully given up hope, you know, once I've fully given up hope, once I'm fully ready to go, once I'm, once the internet has forgotten about me and you guys don't, aren't, you don't need me anymore and I'm not needed around anymore, and if I haven't found a wife and I haven't had kids or something like that and I haven't had the life that I, uh, uh, you know, wanted for myself and I'm, I'm just miserable and alone, I don't think, I don't think I'll have any problem pulling the trigger. Again, I must stress that it's important to take statements about suicide seriously, and it is entirely possible that Boogie meant everything he said in this clip. With that being said, the message he expresses here isn't too different from an abusive relationship in which someone says, if you leave me, I'll kill myself. It's still shifting an unfair amount of responsibility onto his audience, whether he's doing it intentionally or not. And then there's this next clip from a video called How This Trip Saved Me. But the opportunity to, to have met you guys and to take photos with you and have you say to my face, I know better. I'm smarter than that. I'm better than that. I'll always be a fan. To know that I have a core audience that's never going to drink the Kool-Aid, that's never going to believe these horrible, monstrous lies about me. It, um... It saved my life. I hope. So I'm going to leave it at that. Like the other clip I showed, Boogie is shifting a lot of responsibility onto his audience by saying this, whether he knows it or not. He's basically saying that them not believing what he calls lies about him is what saved him. So if his fans leave him, he might commit suicide, but if his fans stay, that will save him. The underlying implication I get from this is that if you stop supporting him and choose to believe things he doesn't want you to, then you would be partially responsible if he kills himself. One of the reasons it's important to talk about this is because of the ripple effect that suicide has. When someone commits suicide, it doesn't just impact the people closest to them. It also has lasting effects on the community. And if it turns out that Boogie is just using threats of suicide as a tool of manipulation, then that would make it much harder for people to genuinely speak about their experiences. Personally, I'm not sure if he's telling the truth or not. But something I found a bit strange was how he chooses to portray his critics. You guys may not be aware of this because you're my core audience, you're my fans, and maybe I shouldn't even make you aware of this, but I'm, I'm going to talk about it anyway. There are more people on the internet these days who hate me, I think, than have ever loved me. There are more people out there, and, and some of them hate me fairly, I think. Some of them don't like uh, the way I look, uh, they don't like my teeth, they don't like the, the way I've lost weight. They hated me because I was fat, and I didn't lose weight fast enough for their taste. And, uh, or maybe I tweeted something that they didn't like, or said something in a video they didn't like. Um, and all of that, obviously, I will take my lumps for that, right? You don't like me because of that. If you hate me because of that, that's a very reasonable thing. Those are things I've done. Those are things I've said. Th that is who I am. Although there are certainly people who dislike Boogie just because of these things, you'll find that the majority of his critics have an issue with his character and his behavior. But I'm not a wife-beating pedophile. Pedophile is one of the things that I frequently get called. I see a fan saying, oh, I used to be such a big fan, but then I found out that he was a wife-beater, or that he was a pedophile, or that he's a homophobe, or that he's a... Uh... So Boogie claims that he's called a wife-beating pedophile frequently. Let's address this one by one. 
Although there are some people who believe he was emotionally abusive, even the top comments on a subreddit very critical of Boogie say that they don't believe he beat her. When Boogie is criticized for abuse, it's mostly emotional abuse. However, to be fair, there are some commenters who say that some of the posts imply or claim physical abuse. Regarding the pedophilia accusations, the closest thing I can think of is when people called out Boogie for saying that he chose to not have kids so that he won't molest them. I... I am a fatally flawed broken. I am a fatally flawed broken person. You know? I'm not that different from my mom. I'm not that different from my dad. I've never molested anybody. You know, I didn't beat my kids. I chose not to have kids so I wouldn't do those things. But does that make does that mean I'm any better than my mother? Does it mean I'm any better than my father? Probably not. There's also this tweet in which Boogie talks about how his dad molested his sister. And just 10 days later, he says that his dad deserved better than what he got. Then Boogie said this to someone who criticized him for saying that. And you tell me that man didn't deserve better than that. I fucking dare you. I fucking dare you and I will knock you the fuck out. I will. I will knock you the fuck out. I will fucking floor you. You tell me that man didn't deserve better than that. Dude, I'll knock you the fuck out. I'll knock you on your fucking ass. I swear to God, I will. <laughs> anybody deserves better than that. However, even with all of those things, I don't think I've seen anybody outright call him a pedophile. Again, the majority of the criticisms about Boogie stem from what is perceived to be manipulation, and from the many inconsistencies in what he says. These are both issues that are extensively covered in the megathread. And as the megathread of criticism gains more and more traction, as well as other reddit threads that are critical of him, Boogie hasn't been taking it well. Man, I had so much respect for you. Such a shame. If your respect was so easily lost, then my friend, I am afraid you have no clue what respect is. No, it wasn't lost easily. I stood by you for years, watching your transformation. I ignored everything Reddit said, because they often took things out of context too. I never took anyone else's word about anyone at face value either. My respect for you wasn't lost easily, but it was still lost. Better. But I hope it wasn't over that stupid Reddit shit. You are better than that. I don't dislike you, Boogs. I've always enjoyed your YouTube gaming news vids. But the stuff I've read tonight about you has appalled me a bit. I'd like to hope a lot of it isn't true. It obviously isn't. But if you choose to believe that, I don't blame you. But I encourage you to dig deep, because it's clearly a lot of stuff taken out of context. I understand that. I'll still watch your YouTube gaming news vids, as you provide good insight and knowledge. May avoid your Twitch streams though, lol. Please stop watching my content. If you could possibly think that of me, I don't want you watching. Please just forget I ever existed. It breaks my heart that you think I am actually that kind of person, or that you could ever think it. Eventually, the criticism he got on Reddit got to him, and he responded on stream as Francis. Hey guys, what's up? It's me, Francis. I took over the fucking stream. Up, Boogie, Boogie, who, Boogie's not here. Did I see Reddit today? Oh, I seen Reddit today. Ooh, ooh, we don't like Boogie anymore. Good, I don't fucking like you. I don't fucking like you, Reddit. Okay, I don't care. I never cared. Here's how. All right, all right. Hey, let me, let me fucking, let me fucking show you something real quick. Hold on, let me show you something. Okay. Here, here is, here is right here. Hold on, this is a magic card. This is not what I was gonna show you. You guys want to fucking see this? Oh, you guys want to fucking see this? You ready for this? You see what this is? This is the world's tiniest violin, okay? Playing the tiny little f fucking dirge for how little of a shit I give about what fucking Reddit thinks about me. Okay? I don't give a fuck. I don't give a fuck. Okay? Reddit can suck my entire dick, and that only takes like 30 seconds. But when they're done, Reddit can kiss my entire fucking ass. Okay? I don't care. I don't care. And nobody cares. Right? But wait, something doesn't add up here. Why would Francis care about people not liking Boogie anymore? And more importantly, what led up to this clip in particular? Well, it all started when Boogie decided to get a Tesla. He said that he could easily afford it because of his sponsors. However, one day later, he claimed that he could barely afford it. People noticed the huge contradiction and used it as evidence that Boogie was lying. Boogie responded by saying this, Well, I originally said I could easily afford the car. Then I got home and started crunching numbers and realized it's actually going to be more of a strain than I had originally thought and expressed that. People are calling this manipulative and mean or something. I don't know, it's weird. 
While this was all going on, a post on Reddit blew up called Boogie2988 begs and manipulates his viewers for money to buy a $100,000 Tesla and it received over 31,000 upvotes. The first half of the video is basically just Boogie repeating the sales pitch he got. Um, I still haven't got it fully financed yet. I'm having to finance it, obviously. I can't spend $100,000 in a day. That would be insane, right? But I am financing it, okay? Um, and so he's like, he's like, Boogie, how many fans are gonna end up buying a Model S because of you? And I'm like, okay, all right, that's fair. He goes, what if we put 10 more cars on the road? Think about the impact you're making in the world where you put 10 more cars on the road. He also says this. Then I get to my hotel room and I'm sitting there saying, oh my God, I just put myself $100,000 in debt. My car payment's $1,700 a month or something like that. Maybe it's $1,500, I don't know. <sighs> That's more money than I make on Twitch. <sighs> Well, I make more than that on Twitch most months, but oh god, that's more money than I make through that's like half of my YouTube rev rad revenue this month. Oh god, oh god, what am I gonna do? What am I gonna do? Why did I do this? Why did I put myself in a hundred thousand dollars into debt? I'm already in, in debt for the car. Why did I put myself into debt? So then it really started to hit me. I really started to panic. I really started to get scared. So I tweeted out, I tweeted out that I was not gonna be able to afford this car. Reddit and Twitter lost their fucking minds. Oh, are you trying to manipulate people into giving you money? The answer is yes. Give me some money. Also, no, I just realized that when I got home, the car was fucking expensive, and I didn't realize. But the problem is, I was there with Jesse. Jesse was buying the car anyway, and Jesse's, got, Jesse's like, Boogie, treat yourself. I'm like, you're right, treat myself. He's like, Boogie, treat yourself. I'm like, all right, treat myself. He's like, Boogie, treat yourself. I'm like, all right. If you guys want to help me pay for my Tesla, please go ahead and dig deep. I sure would like a free fucking Tesla. Reach down in your pockets and give me $100,000 tonight. Curthew, I'm looking at you, motherfucker. <laughs> just kidding, Curthew. The parts where he tells you to buy his Tesla honestly came off as a joke to me. However, you could say that Boogie's trying to make his viewers feel bad for him because of an impulsive financial decision that he made, and that he's doing that on Twitch, a platform in which people can give him money. Boogie would then meme the situation on Twitter, making posts like this. One confused bystander replied, I thought you had already bought a Tesla, to which Boogie responded, Nope. Hope that goes to show you how bad this game of telephone the internet plays really is. Except Boogie literally said the words, I legit just bought a Tesla. He also said that he bought a car that he can barely afford. He said that he put a small deposit down, but he's not committed to it yet. When someone asked him if his statement about buying the Tesla was false, Boogie responded by saying this. Instead of saying, I bought a Tesla, I should have said, Tess drove a Tesla today and put $2,500 down so they can build one to my specs, and I plan to finance it after the cool-off period if I plan to continue the purchase, but had no clue the internet would shit itself. As I previously mentioned, Boogie was pretty angry at Reddit, and used Francis to vent that anger. And that wasn't the first time Boogie has used Francis as a way of venting. For those of you who don't know, Boogie went through a divorce about a year and a half ago, so he made a video as Francis, destroying an effigy of his ex-wife. Hey guys, what's up? It's me, Francis. You're an actual psychopath. You are the reason she left, okay? And you know that. Yeah, Boogie, I'm why she left. I'm all killed the only reason you found her to begin with, okay? I wish you would talk right now. I wish you would say something right now. Can you talk? Can you talk? Huh? I built you. I put you together. You got a mouth. So you're gonna talk? Are you gonna talk? Are you gonna talk? Talk! Talk! I said you're why I left. Shut the up. Nobody asked you. In the comments, Boogie says, First off, let me remind you this is just a stupid sketch. Don't read too much into it. I needed a reason to be a psycho in this psycho series, so this is what it took. Yeah, it's possible, but how can we be so sure when he just recently used Francis to vent out his own anger toward being criticized on Reddit? Although Francis is clearly an exaggerated character, the line begins to blur when Boogie uses Francis to respond to things that are going on in his personal life, such as when Francis gets angry that people are criticizing Boogie on Reddit, or when Francis lashes out at his ex-wife. As one person put it, beating an effigy of your ex-wife? Hilarious. Yeah, I knew that some people would take it that way, but you can't compromise your art because of willfully ignorant people. Same with the Francis Abandoned video. People still think that was about the ex-wife, but she helped me write it, lol. 
Whether or not this is true, I'm not sure, but it's pretty strange regardless. And now, for our final chapter, I feel that it's important to revisit a situation that was previously brushed aside in the public sphere. It involves a young woman who goes by the name of Lucy Fox. Towards the end of 2017, Boogie had separated from his wife and was in the midst of a divorce. Soon after, Boogie decided to go on a sugar daddy website called Seeking.com because he was looking for some coochie. He found a young woman named Lucy Fox. If you don't believe that, here's a comment he made on his own subreddit. I met Lucy Fox on Seeking. She's the only real girl I've met from there. Don't mind admitting to it. Once I discovered the caliber of girl you might meet there, I was kind of done with it. Boogie, it's a sugar daddy website. You knew what you were getting into. There are also these screenshots of his profile, in which he says he's a people pleaser who needs to be pleased. It's worth mentioning that Lucy wasn't even old enough to drink at the time, something Boogie admitted to on the H3 podcast. How old is she? <laughs> How old is she? <laughs> What's the age? She will be able to legally drink soon. Oh, Damn, you dog, dude. Yeah, it was bad, man. It's not bad. She's illegal. You're out there. You're yeah, shaking your dick. But how did the actual relationship go? So I dated a YouTuber. And for his sake, I'm just going to call him Asshole. I met Asshole. And um, he was on a website. I'm not going to say what kind of website, but you can probably figure it out. And I thought, oh, this must be a joke, like. Lucy never refers to Boogie by name in the video, though people figured out who she was talking about pretty fast. The reason she doesn't name him is because of this. I was never told to sign an NDA. I was just told to keep his fucking name out of my mouth. So, I am. Just talking about an asshole. You can find the entire video on YouTube, and I'll provide a link to it in the description. But here's what went down, according to her. So she messages Boogie, saying that she thought he was married, to which he explained that he's going through a divorce and he wanted her to come over. She was actually a fan of Boogie, and didn't think there would be much of an issue because of his reputation as a good person. So she comes over to his house, and they just talk. Eventually, they started to form a relationship. She would listen to him vent about his life and take care of him. But because she was spending her time doing that, that meant she couldn't do her job as a cam girl, which is her source of income. Lucy then goes on to say that it would turn into an argument every time she tried to leave, since she had to leave in order to do her job. If you know what I do for a job, then you know I have to be at home <clears throat> in order to be on cam. Well, I couldn't do that because it would turn into an argument every time I tried to leave. Why are you trying to leave me? You know I need somebody right now. Blah, 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 you know. She then goes on to describe how Boogie didn't really care about her problems, and yet he expected her to care about his problems. She had to travel for a porn shoot, and Boogie didn't really like that. Lucy claims Boogie was uncomfortable with it, even though he knows what she does, and Boogie wanted her to stay there with him instead. She explained that she needed money, since every time she tried to leave his house, he would scream and yell at her. Eventually, Boogie paid for her flight, but it doesn't end there. It got to the point that Boogie would verbally abuse her for not being there enough. She would go home in tears as he would scream at her. After Boogie's constant verbal abuse, she left him. Now keep in mind that these are only allegations, and I'm just summarizing what she said in the video. When these allegations came out, public opinion on the situation was very divided. Although some people sided with Lucy, most people sided with Boogie and claimed Lucy was just a gold digger. Keemstar interviewed Boogie on Drama Alert, and Boogie claimed that he doesn't know why she would say any of this, and that he has nothing but love and respect for her. It's interesting that he said that, when you can see these screen caps which clearly show him liking tweets saying she's horrible and a sociopath. It's also worth mentioning that Keemstar is biased in favor of Boogie, since Boogie helped him when he was going through backlash. But if you don't believe anything she's saying because it's just conjecture, that's completely understandable. However, you could also apply that same line of thinking to anything Boogie says. How can we be so sure of what Boogie says without clear proof? At the end of the day, the tale of Boogie2988 is an interesting one, with new details and chapters being added every day. Whether you believe he's a malicious manipulator or simply a man struggling with his own demons, he continues to be a controversial figure. All you can really do is look at the facts and come to your own conclusions. But why does any of this matter in the first place? What difference does it make if Boogie isn't who we once thought he was? Throughout the years, Boogie has amassed a large audience and has captivated many with his videos. Many people still see him as an inspirational figure, and his words still hold weight to those people. That is precisely why it's important to think about the impact he has on his audience. Nobody expects YouTubers to be star student role models, but it's also important to keep in mind that with great power, 
comes great responsibility. And after everything that's transpired, nothing has been more abundantly clear than this. Boogie needs to do better, not only for himself, but for his audience. One for me and one for my uncle.